talking with Jonathan today after tennis, and we were discussing uh, central equilibrium and how it's come up that it's not as easy for some people to get to that, get to that state, get to that, really get a, a strong central equilibrium. And I think um, as much as I've talked about it, I'm going to talk about it a little bit more and clarify one thing that I really want to emphasize. Because last week I was emphasizing the importance of not pushing your butt out past your foot whenever you're making that, making one leg substantial or, or um, moving. So you, you don't want the, the butt to go lateral at all. So we, uh, the, the nickname we have for it is JBS or jutting butt syndrome. And it's from a, a very mechanical substantial perspective. What it means is that if, if my first motion, if I'm gonna take a step forward is to rock into this, this my right leg here. And by doing it by, by just shifting my weight and pushing my butt out to the side to make a step forward, I can make that step, but I'm not rooted in that, in that situation. I'm floating. And reason why is because I am not sung qua. So that's, we want, we need that, that qua to be released in order to unkink the hose and allow the torso and the leg to, to function together. So if I'm rocked into here, I cannot release my, my hip bone. The muscles that are supporting it need to be engaged. They need to be tight in order to be able to prevent me from falling over. So consequently, I cannot achieve Sun Kwa whenever, whenever I do that. So the key here is how do I get my weight into my right leg and be able to make that, that step without um, pushing my butt out? And that is to feel the ball of the foot, set the knee and spiral down and then turn. And so notice that my butt did not go out, it just spiraled. And that enables me to then step forward under control because this leg is then, I'm able to get some quan and, and so my root is well established. There is no jutting butt syndrome. If I try to do that, if I push my butt out and then try to get some qua, I'm just gonna throw everything off. So the, uh, one of the problems that I see happening, probably in about half of the people I work on as a, uh, as a polarity therapist, is that there is a pelvic imbalance in some way. And it's usually because of the way people stand over, over a lifetime. Very few people stand with their weight evenly distributed between their feet unless they're consciously doing it. And it, for, but for most people, there's a, there's a tendency to, to rock to one side or the other, or there's a tendency to, to lock your knees and then, and then jut your butt out so that the pelvic is rocked forward. Those are the, the, the most common. There's also a, a, a posterior tilt with the pelvis, but you don't see that quite as often. Mostly it's, it's, there's a uh, pronounced uh, lower back curve that pushes the butt out and there's, or there's, it butt is pushed one side or the other, basically JBS. So the, the hack that, you know, I, I came across to, um, to do this. Um, why don't you uh, stand up and we'll, uh, we'll go through this because the key here is to remember that despite all this, this information I'm giving you about the physical side of central equilibrium, the substantial side, what is more important is learning to identify the insubstantial feeling that comes with being in central equilibrium. Zhong Ding. So the, and 
So if you look at it, you think of it as when I say don't push your butt, I don't know JBS. I am just drawing a map there. That is not central equilibrium. That is just it's like, okay, look over here and and you know, there's gold buried in that in this spot. And I'm just pointing to a spot. I'm not really giving you the gold. The gold you have to find yourself. You got to dig for it. And that comes from aligning your body and getting the feeling. And so if you just stand, so feel the balls of your feet and release your knees. And um, so if you find that you have your weight slightly tilted to one side or the other, you, you might not be able to notice it right now by looking at me, but I have my right hip is locked up because I have more weight in my right leg than my left. And now I'm gonna take it into the left leg. And even though it looks pretty normal, it, there is definitely a locking up that occurs. So if you're finding that your hips are locked up either side, there's a good chance that you are loaded more in that side than the other. So the hack that, that, that I came up with is if you do have one leg that is more tense, more um, loaded up than the other, then let's say uh, your right leg. So if you just bring your weight just slightly to the left. So we start off like the first move where we're stepping out to the side, right? We're, we're gonna do that. We begin that, we, with the weight 50-50. We want to have feel the balls of both feet. Well, when you do that, kind of just shade just a slight bit to the left so that we know that we're going to be activating the right leg. But so just for just to let the right leg go so that you can that you can actually use it. You can actually do stuff with it. You can release the hip joint. You load up the left leg just slightly and then you feel the ball of the right foot. And set the right knee and, and then you start to load that up and find that place. There's a quiet place right in the center there that when you get into that place, your mind clears and the energy just rushes through. You open the gate between heaven and earth and you allow, connect up to the big chi. So just for our purposes right now, you're gonna be looking for that place. So just bring your weight a little more to the left and just feel into that. And then, and then feel the ball, the right foot without shifting any weight into it. And then look for that spot. And the, it's counterintuitive because it will be the spot where you feel the most vulnerable, is where you feel the most precarious. And paradoxically, it is a place where you are at your peak of root, of energy, of internal power but it feels vulnerable, it feels precarious. So just, and then now bring your weight and just put your weight a little more into the right foot without dramatically shifting your position at all. And just feel into that and then feel the ball of your left foot and then find your center equilibrium there. This is a quiet meditation, but notice it has the effect, a very powerful effect of a meditation as you do it. Your mind clears, you get to the gap between thoughts very quickly, whenever you find that spot. So it's not just because, not just that it gives you more effective power, that increases your root, it increases your energy, but it also clears your mind and allows you to feel into that super conscious state. Now take your, into your, 
feel your left foot and just kind of shift even more into that and just notice what that does to the, your, your energy, what it does to your mind whenever you really rock to the side and just, and then feel the ball of the right foot, set the right knee and start to load up the right foot and spiraling down to the left as you do that and just feel into that and find your center of equilibrium. Notice that spot. There's a place where the water runs clear. And then turn. And as you turn, still feel your energetic coherence, still feel your central equilibrium, still feel the weight on the inside of your foot. Feel that ball of the left foot or the right foot, I'm sorry. Feel the ball of the right foot as you do that. And you wanna be able to just release into that. Just really feel sung in that right leg so that you can pick up the left heel effortlessly because you really feel relaxed into that. Now step forward with your left foot and feel the ball of the left foot and push your left knee forward. So now we're going to be looking for central equilibrium in a bow stance. So allow your weight to go just a little bit into your back foot so that you can release the, your, the, the front claw, your left claw. And then feel the ball, set the knee, but feel the leg is kind of empty. So we're going to release down, spiral down to the left now, and we start to load it up. But we're loading it up after it's been emptied out. So even though we, we had the weight, we had the, the left leg forward, it's not loaded. It, we're still supporting from the, from the right leg. And we want to feel into that and turn back to center and find that same quiet place of central equilibrium there. Find that, that sweet spot where the water runs clear. And feel the ball of the right foot, set the right knee. Good, and then spiral down and start to load up the right leg now. Find that quiet spot there. If you can't, then go back into the left leg a bit empty out the right and then feel the ball, set the knee and then ah, spiral down again. Just release down and step back with the left foot and just bring, raise the heel of the left foot. So you're just lightly on the toe. So now we're finding central equilibrium in the right foot, the right leg, but in a primarily single-weighted stance. We have about 95 to 99% of the weight in the right leg now. And we're looking for that sweet spot. We're looking for that quiet place of, of connection, of emptiness, that paradoxical, powerful emptiness. Okay, so and then step up. And find your center equilibrium with your feet parallel. Bring your weight a little more to the left. more to the right and find the place where it 
the pendulum stops where it just, there you are, dead center. And you feel that connection. It's like now your body is a conduit for the energy. The energy of the heavens cascading down through and out through your feet, the energy of the earth coming up and out to the top of your head. And feel it radiating in all directions. Take a deep breath, breathe, inhale, and exhale, and disappear the cheek, dissolve it. 